So, you know, we got to Austin and, you know, I just went to work and began practicing. We had a little office. I was practicing with Dr. Richard Buck. And we had a little office, I think it was 415 West 15th Street. And that's where uh, Reuben Johnson later put United Bank all along there. I think, it, you know, our building that isn't there anymore. It's Okay. It might, might be the drive-in for that bank or something. But at that time, all of the doctors in Austin were either over on Red River or they were in a Capital National Bank building or they were along 15th Street where we put our office. Physicians and dentists were all along there. And, and that's the reason that uh, some of the doctors went to MK and asked him to put up a medical building for them because uh, it wasn't convenient to go to uh, the uh, Capitol National Bank building. It, you know, it's a downtown bank building. Right. Parking is tough. In 15th Street, you're sort of strung up and down in little little houses that have been converted into medical offices, mm -hmm. which, you know, they were just, they, they re really weren't suitable, but that was the best you could do at that time. So that's what led to the, uh, the you know, we were, we were there for about four years. We were in one building for two years, and we moved next door for two years while they were building Medical Park Tower. So what year did you guys form the partnership or the corporation for Medical Park Tower? <clears throat> well, I moved into Medical Park Tower, I think, in 1966. So we must have formed the corporation probably around 1964, 65. You know, we had to put up the money and then MK had to begin buying. At that time, 38th Street dead-ended at Shoal Creek. Absolute dead. It was all a slum down there. You can't imagine what it was like. It was, I think MK did more than 200 and some individual transactions buying those little houses, which created, you know, the land for Medical Park Tire and Seaton. Right. I could talk about that deal for 20 hours, when, when we formed Medical Park Tower, there were f about 52 doctors. Most of them were physicians. I'd say uh, 47, 48 were physicians and there were three or four dentists. But, you know, among us, we put up a couple million dollars. We subscribed to stock at $10 a share. And... Uh, I found that location, not MK. I called a man that, uh, his name was A.F. Deloney, and he had a lot of real estate in town. And uh, I said, Mr. Deloney, uh, I see you have this land for sale. You know, how, how much is it? And he asked me my name, and he said, young man, this is on the telephone. He said, young man, you're not big enough to buy this land, but you go get some of your doctor friends and come back and talk to me. So I went to MK and I said, MK, this Mr. Deloney has this land. One piece is on the uh, east side of Shoal Creek and one piece is on the west side. And the piece on the west side became Shoal Creek Hospital. You know where that okay, is yeah. behind, behind uh, Randall's? Right. Okay, that was one piece. The other piece was on the bluff above it was Medical Park, it was the first piece of Medical Park Tower. Okay. They were both under, they were just raw land. It was 250,000, I don't know, it was, it was maybe three, four acres. I don't remember exactly what it was at the time. But that started the deal. And then from there, MK began buying along the streets, just one, one property after another. And then if you, if you own both sides of a street, you can petition the city to close the street. And if you can close the street, you gain the, the width of the street for free. Really? Yeah, you're learning something tonight. <laughs> that's right. I didn't know that either. I don't have to go to but, B school but, for that. But that, that's the only, I mean, otherwise, otherwise, even if you buy on both sides of the street, if you can't close the street, you, you just got, you know, you can't consolidate into a big chunk of land. Okay. Because, you know, you have to have seven, eight, ten, twelve acres to put a medical center. You can't have it interspersed with streets. Right. So, you know, this, this took a couple of years to do this. But the, the point, the reason I know so much about 
the Austin Doctors Building Corporation, that was the name, that was our name, was that most physicians have a lot of emergencies and they're real busy at lunchtime. We had all of our, most of our meetings at lunchtime, a few of them in the evening. So they made me be the secretary because as a dentist, I didn't have, as an orthodontist, I didn't have a lot of emergencies, Right. you see, and I could make the, the, the noon luncheon meeting. So I took the minutes for like 10 of the 14 years. Hmm. And Dr. Sam Key took the, uh, the other three or four years, but I took most of them. So I really know what happened and the, you know, how everything happened there. I mean, that, 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 that's a story in itself. That is, that is really a story. But anyway, we, we, you know, we, we formed a corporation and we built the building for about uh, 2.3 million. I mean, it's unbelievable. You'd be able to build a house for that. Right. That's a seven-story building with 105,000 square feet of rentable space plus two basements. 2.3 million. Whew. That building later sold for 18.2 million. Whew. 18. After we sold it. But, but anyway, so we, Dr. Buck and I moved into that building when it was open. Okay. And then later on, he and I separated our practices and I moved up on the fifth floor he stayed where he was, and, and so that, you know, that sort of was the early years. And then I was in Medical Park Tire about 10 years or so, and then I put up this office next door on Sunshine Drive. I had that land, and uh, John Carter, a, an art dealer and a very good friend of mine, said, why don't you put an office over there? And, you know, he and Claire thought it would be a good idea, and I did it, and that was really a great idea because, you know, I owned my own building. I wasn't paying rent. Right. Plus, it's right across the street from a high school. That couldn't hurt. Yeah, anymore. that didn't hurt, and I, you know, I walked to work. I didn't have a tough commute. You know, you know at 5 o'clock, when I, sometime I get down to see Armando, you know, in yeah. South Austin. My God, I get on that uh, Mopac, and it's a killer. I imagine what you must go through right. going to work and coming back from Round Rock. I mean, you know, imagine just walking to... Right. I mean, that saves you maybe... 30 minutes to an hour, at least. Yeah. One way. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So what's your next question, my friend? Uh, you know, actually, I, I, at some point in time, I'd like to find out more about the whole Austin Doctors Corporation, that whole thing. That's well, interesting. Well, yeah, the, the, the problem, I don't know how much to go into that. The problem was <clears throat> there were about 50 investors, 50 to 52 investors, but the large majority of the doctors who moved in were not investors mm -hmm. by their choice. They were offered the stock the same as we were, but some of them thought it was too much of a speculation, some of them weren't interested in it. Well, that created an immediate conflict because the stockholders would rather have the rent a little bit higher and pay the rent to keep the building on a sound financial footing. Right. The, the non-stockholders were adamant about keeping the rent real low. So when we started, I think the first... I don't know how many years the first... Uh, lease ran at least two and maybe four years the rent was like 36 cents a square foot imagine in the in in best office building in the state the best medical building probably in the state and NK was trying to get it up two cents more like 38 cents and everyone was screaming and hollering you know it was going to bankrupt them and so we you know we operated the first lease period for just that lease. And, you know, it was it was a positive cash flow, but it wasn't, you know, a big a big profit margin. Right. Okay? Now, because the building was so successful and filled up right away, the doctors began asking MK to buy more land in that area so that we could expand. So we began to buy land in the Bailey Park area, which was across the street south. Right. In the Bailey Park area. And uh, he began buying this land, and of course you're buying raw land, 
there's no income from it, and we're operating under the original subscription of money. Right. Okay. So we begin to get up against it. We, you know, we we can't. The cash flow from the building with this low rent demanded by the non-shareholders, you know, and at the other, on the other side you have the shareholders urging MK to buy more land for expansion. And which he's doing, and then, you know, we're beginning to run out of money. And the banks are getting nervous. So we have another subscription of stock at $12. We sold another batch of stock. And then I think later on we sold another batch for 15 But the subsequent subscriptions were much smaller than the original. Right. You know, we weren't making a lot of money. Some of the doctors began to run scared, and they wouldn't invest anymore. So... After a while, we ran into a situation where the banks were, you know, getting a little nervous and pressing us to do something, you know, sell, sell the corporation, cash everybody out, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a long story, all the things. I don't want to, you know, put people in an unfavorable light. We never should have sold that. But anyway, the, the upshot was that we sold after... Uh, I don't know, maybe 12 or 14 years total, mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end, from the time before we began the construction, when we first put our money up to the time we sold it. Uh, we, MK, they first went to Seton and offered it to Seton for a little over six million, which included Medical Park Tire, Bailey Square Surgical Center, which we had subsequently built, and that was a very expensive building. Mm. You know, you got another medical building, and then we had 230,000 square feet of undeveloped land in the Bailey Park area. That's a lot of land mm -hmm. for just a little bit of money that we had. So we offered it to Seton. Seton brought in a consultant from California big guy with a prognathic jaw, I'll never forget him. He looked like he needed orthodontics terribly. And he walked around and looked at the deal and he said, this is not a good deal, don't buy it. So Seton turned it down. One of the biggest mistakes that they ever made. So the corporation was bought by uh, the First National Bank of Chicago. It was a trust fund, it was a union trust fund for pension and profit sharing. You understand what I mean? They bought it as an investment for $6.2 million. And they, they uh, uh, escrowed $400,000 to, to be sure that we could make the numbers work that we, that we used in our proposal. Okay. And then when they got control of the corporation, they immediately spent a whole bunch of money upgrading the building and landscaping and everything and so the numbers didn't come out the way it would have if they didn't do that. So then they, they, they didn't have to give us the 400000 So they ended up getting the building and everything for $5.8 million. $5.8 million. They cheated us out of the 400000 Later on, the building sold uh, a number of times. And I don't know how many times, but I know that in the end... Seton bought Medical Park Tire alone for $18.2 million. After turning down Medical Park Tire, Bailey Square Surgical Center, and 230,000 square feet of land. For $6 million. They, they turned it down. Yeah. And then they, they paid $18.2 million just for Medical Park Tower. And it's still by far the best medical building in the city, by far. And in fact, they, they really don't want any dentists in that building. They only want physicians because it's, it's more geared to, to medicine. I don't think a dentist could move into that building. There's maybe one or two, maybe one left that was there from the beginning. Hmm. But uh, everyone that's moved out, the offices have been taken over by physicians. And uh, because the, the groups that get in there begin expanding. Right. You know, and they want to expand and, you know, they start moving people. You know, if you have a little one-man office, they'll move you over here and then expand this big group. Right. Because, you know, the advantage of a medical 
building is are the, the self-referrals among all the doctors that are in there. That's what they want. And Seton having a hospital, they want physicians in there that are going to, you know, hospitalize patients, mm -hmm. especially for big procedures. They don't want dermatologists in there. You know, they want neurosurgeons in there. They want orthopedic surgeons. They want general surgeons because that's where hospitals make their money. Right. So anyway, we, we sold the building, we cashed out, and everybody made money on it. But, you know, I don't know if I doubled my money or tripled it. I might have doubled or tripled it, no more than that, somewhere in between. But, I mean, that package would have been worth, you know, 50 million now, maybe right. more. I mean, you know, my part of it might have been a couple million dollars. I mean, you know, the doctors ran scared and they would, you know, the sad part is probably $250,000 would have saved that building. You know, from 250 total from 50 doctors, 5,000 each would have saved that building. And, you know, we sold it and everybody got cashed out and, I mean, it was okay, but I, I don't know what that package would be worth today. MK did a phenomenal job building that building. Everybody suspected him. He was going to do this. He was going to do that. He didn't do anything. He just did a tremendous job. And he took no money as the, uh, he was like the general contractor. No money to do that, huh? He, he was willing to do that. He took no money during that whole period and about killed him for a couple of years to build that building. I mean, it was tough. Going, getting it through the city and dealing with doctors and then some of the doctors would come in and they'd work with the architect and they'd spend, you know, 20, 30 hours designing a, uh, an office in there and then they'd walk away. Meantime, we're having to pay that architect, you know what I'm saying? Right. You, you can't do that and privately, you know, you commission an architect, he draws you the plans. If you don't use them, you still pay for them. Right. Well, we were just doing all kinds of things just to accommodate doctors. Mm. So a lot, you know, it was, it was a very difficult time. Now, at this time, was M.K. still uh, principal of that school, or had he no, stopped? No, he, he had uh, left the school, and he worked full-time. This was really a full-time job. I mean, you know, you, you know, you're negotiating leases with doctors. Doctors are fighting you over pennies, over... You know, I don't like the door there. I don't want the light fixture there. You know, I don't want to be on the south side. I don't want to be on the west side. You know, I mean, it, you know, you got 120 prima donnas in there. Right. You know, and you're trying to please all of them. That's not easy. And MK was accommodating them. You know, you go into a regular building, you know, they, they give you the walls and say, you do what you want right. at your expense. And you start paying rent right now. And, you know, now the doctors in there are paying rent on common space. They're paying rent on hallways. They're paying rent on bathrooms, mm -hmm. things which we never charge. Right. We never charge for elevators, bathrooms, you know, walkways, all of that, you know, the lobby, you know, all that is factored in, you know. At that time, we were just giving it away. So you think it would have been better to hold that building not only for resale later, oh. but just for the cash flow off of the rent? That building would have made everybody rich. Yeah. That building would have made everybody rich. But, you know, I mean, the concept was great, but, uh, I mean, it, it, there, there was so much that happened. Seton was difficult to deal with. I, was, I mean, there was so much that happened. I don't, I don't want to go into a lot of it. I'd rather go into something a little, a little more pleasant.